Welcome to Emergency Matters. My name is Mike Balboni and I'm the host of the show. And I get a chance to explore a lot of different issues as it relates to emergency management. I'm here today with my special guests, North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth and North Hempstead Public Safety Commissioner Andy DeMartin. And we're going to discuss the key aspects of emergency management. Welcome, Supervisor. Welcome, Commissioner. Thanks for being on the show. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. So you know, emergency management is a vast area of information and uh, services and responses. And that's really how we're going to break up what we're going to talk about today. So I guess the, the first thing I know that as a first responder, Commissioner, you've, you've been involved in a lot of incidents where when you get a report from a scene, it's, it's something that you don't really know what the information is. And so information is key, is it not? Absolutely, Mike. It's the most critical part of handling a situation. Uh -huh. You know, those first things you come upon are, you know, are not necessarily what the reports are. Now, Supervisor, since you now are supervising the town and its responses, how do we work with the information we get during an emergency? Well, there are a lot of things that happen during an emergency. And the one thing that we know is the most important thing is to make sure that our residents are safe. Mm -hmm. So everything that we do goes toward that. Uh, whether it's a snow emergency, whether it's a weather, an, uh, another weather emergency, or some other kind of emergency, the bottom line is, what are we doing to make sure that the residents of the town of North Hempstead are safe? And so there are a number of things that we do to reach out to the residents, and there are a number of things that the residents can do to make sure that they have all the up-to-date information that they have. So how, does the they town, need. how do the town workers, the town, the folks who are responsible for responding mm -hmm. and, and assisting the town residents, how do they get their information as to what's going on in the town? Well, it depends. If it's, if it's an emergency that we have notice over, um, such as the impending snowstorms that we dealt with all winter, then the, what I did, and this happened actually on my first day on the job, mm -hmm. there was a blizzard that was coming, and so I held a meeting of our commissioners. And so we spoke, every single one, and talked about the different strategies that the different departments mm -hmm. would um, implement to deal with the blizzard and some of the effects of that that could, in fact, put our residents in harm's way. You know, when you're talking about your first day, what it reminds me of is, is something that I know a lot of residents perhaps don't have an appreciation for, but emergencies tend not to ha happen nine to five, right? <laughs> <laughs> they always happen later at night. And Absolutely. you've got to call everyone together. And, and, and I know you've been very effective with your team, devel developing your team and building your team to be able to respond. But now how about 311? How does 311 work in terms of the information you get? Well, and, and that's such a key part of our being able to deal with emergencies and to have residents be up to date on, on whatever information they may need. So 311 is the 311 call center, and I think people just keep hearing, if you have a problem, if you have an issue, call 311. And we have the 311 um, workers are so beautifully trained to, number one, have information that needs to go out and to respond to information that's coming in. During an emergency, what we do is we make sure that that 311 call center is open 24 hours mm -hmm. a day. We're probably one of the only municipalities that in fact offers that service. So I know during Superstorm Sandy, we would get 311 calls from the city, from, yeah. from all different areas, because we were the only place where if you called, there was actually a person that you could speak to at the other end. Mm -hmm. And so the 311 call operator would either have the information that is needed to give to the person calling in, or if the person calling in has an emergency that they're reporting, they'll take that information and make sure that it gets to the appropriate person to deal with. You know, Mike, what's important is that the supervisor has charged me with the uh, um, basic responsibilities of keeping 311 with the most updated information. So we gather that from either uh, the federal government, New York State, or Nassau County OEM in conjunction with our emergency management service. So this way, 311 has the answers when the resident calls. So what you're saying is that there's really this mutual assistance, mutual information sharing between different levels of government, right? There has to be that fluidity because yeah. we don't know everything. We need to get information yeah. from the state, from the federal government, just as they need to get information from us so that they're yeah. alerted to what the particular issues affecting North Hempstead yeah. are. Now, Commissioner, there's another way that we get situational awareness in an emergency as well, isn't it, in terms of the camera systems that we have in the town? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's been an uh, implementation for the last four years to increase the camera system. It uh, gives us a visual utilization of what's happening in our different areas. You can pretty much track storms from east to west, north to south, how they affect the uh, town and how it affects its residents. 
Another important thing about the cameras is they really zone in on all the different areas in the town. So we're able to keep track on different infrastructure things that are happening if there's a flood, if, if something is going on. We can actually see it in real time. Okay. And that's another way of us being aware of an emergency. So in terms of getting information, you have the 311 system where people will call and, and tell you about their emergencies. You have the camera system where you can look at what's actually happening on the ground throughout the town. And then you, you set a key point beforehand. You've got a bunch of highly trained commissioners and leaders in the various agencies, and they all report into you what they're hearing from the town's workers. Is that right? That's exactly right, because one person has to have the whole picture. And mm -hmm. so by doing that, we accomplish that, and which, is, which is of great importance. One of the things that I learned as soon as I took um, over as supervisor is what an amazing staff we have in the town of North Hempstead. Uh, we have commissioners and heads of departments that are so committed to making sure that our residents are safe. And again, mm -hmm. the bottom line is we're here to serve the residents. And the way we can do that best is by making sure that they're safe. And so every effort that we make is toward that end. So th now you've developed situational awareness. You know what's going on as a result of these avenues that have been created. Now, how do you push information out to the residents and tell them what they should be doing, whether it's evacuation or just information about services? Great question. So first of all, every resident should know what evacuation zone they're in. Um, I know you have information about that, and uh, so that, that's a key thing. We ha make sure that our websites are very up to date so that if they go onto a website, they're able to see whatever information is most current. But of course, in times of an emergency, you may not have power, you may not have access right, to your computer. Right. So we need to make sure that we have many different methods of getting mm -hmm. information out to our residents. So there can't be too much redundancy. Right. So yes, it'll go up on the website, and yes, it'll be on our Facebook page, but we'll do you know, robocalls, we'll do a reverse 311. And so it is so important that people sign up for uh, North Hempstead Alert, mm -hmm. so that we have their numbers, that we're able to communicate with them. We also work very closely with our villages. There's um, uh, North Shore Alert that is also very um, instrumental in getting information out to the residents, and we coordinate with them to make sure that the information that's going out is getting, the same information is going to all the residents that So we consistency, serve. but yet you also tell the information to make sure that they, they ha residents have the information they need when they need it. Absolutely. Now, and Andy, it's not just about phone calls either, right? It's not, Mike. It's, uh, you know, we do the personal touch as well. Um, we've had calls come in. We've gone out to elderly residents to help them in times of need. Uh, we team up with the uh, DOSA and the what is DOSA? State, um, Department of Aging Services, Services for, mm -hmm. the, for the town of North Hempstead. Mm -hmm. uh, public safety and a DOSA representative will go out, make a door touch, uh, knock on the door, make sure that resident's uh, safe, doing well through the uh, vent of a storm. Now I remember that during Superstorm super Sandy, the, the part of the town that actually would help deliver meals or help de deliver different services to the Department of Aging was also utilized to go check on people to see that they were doing okay for perhaps an, a homebound senior that, that maybe had troubles. Absolutely, and that was done, and Andy, you know, you referred mm -hmm. to that. We also, when we, when we put our messages out, we also encouraged people to check on their neighbors right. because there's one, you know, we can do what we can do, but people who know that they have neighbors who might be in need of help. Mm -hmm. We're a family. We always need to be working together. Right. And the whole idea is for all of us to be doing that. As a town, we're a family looking out for each other. And as neighbors, we're doing the same thing. So then when you have, the, uh, when, when you have an, an emergency and you're going to respond, so what, what type of services does, does the town, is the town able to provide in when there's inclement weather or when there's, say, a fire that you want to support. Well, what are the different services that town can provide? Well, the thing that I learned very quickly is our highway department mm. is, you know, beyond comparison, I think, to anything. And so a great service that's provided is plowing our roads. And so this winter, we certainly were challenged um, in ways that I don't think anybody could have anticipated. Right. But we came through that challenge. And there's a budget impact too, right? Yes, there is. And, and, and it was interesting because whenever there was another snowstorm, people would say, what is this doing to your budget? Hmm. And my answer was always the same thing. The thing that we need to be concerned with most now is making sure, and it's like a theme, our residents are safe, right. our roads are safe, and that people can get from place to place. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it, it's, it's like when you have a, a budget at home 
and you have you budgeted for this and you budgeted for that, but you may not have budgeted for the fact that your car is going to break down. Mm, well, right. you're not going to spend the whole year not using your car. You'll find ways of adjusting your budget so that you might not spend as much in another area because this is the thing that needs your attention. And so when it came to our snowstorms, the thing that needed our attention was to make sure that our roads were plowed. Once they were plowed, we had to make sure that they were um, sanded and salted, really, you know, more importantly. And then we ran into a situation where we were running out of salt, as was everybody else, right, right. you know, in Nassau County. And so we looked to our governor and we looked to the Department of Transportation to see what they could do to make sure that we got the needed salt supplies. And we shared that with any village that needed them that was also running out. So it was really an intermunicipal um, uh, approach to trying to make sure that, that everyone's needs were being met. You know, Mike, it's underestimated on how important the public servant is, uh, Judy, in, in, in that case. Uh, she has to advocate for her town to get salt. So, you know, we give her the statistical information as the com commissioners. We're running out. We'll be out of salt by the next storm. And she takes that and provides the political will to get us, uh, the, the governor, to release more salt to the, to the town. It's, uh, it's a hand-in-hand -hand relationship between emergency management and government. And basically, that's really what it is. It's a collaborative effort mm -hmm. between emergency management, between highways, between DOSA, between all. There's, there's not a service that we provide in the town that's not affected by an emergency. So the ability for us to communicate and work well is of really paramount importance. And one of the most critical things is this is a crew that is field tested. We've been through Irene together, we've been through Sandy together, and we now, I, I would say if you took and combined those snowstorms together, it would be a critical emergency, 17. 17, 17 snowstorms where we yeah. work collaboratively mm -hmm. together. So we're field tested and we're glued together. You know, I remember having a conversation with you recently talking about that a lot of the assets people don't appreciate also that are here, and yet what we saw them all on display during Superstorm Sandy, everything from the Parks Department mm -hmm. opening up their centers so that you could actually, at one point in time, we were housing uh, restoration crews, you know, the Yes We Can Center where this uh, uh, show is being taped. In the basement here, we put up, I think, 150 state troopers mm -hmm. to help provide security throughout uh, Nassau County. I mean, these are, when, when, I know it's your view of government, that, that government is for the people, and, and these are services that when they're called upon, you're not going to hesitate to utilize them. But I think, I, think don't, I don't think people really understand the breadth and scope of these various services. Did you have that same uh, realization when you came to the town in this position? Well, I knew that we were going to be there, and, and of, of course I had worked with uh, John Kamen during Superstorm Sandy, mm -hmm. so I was in the bunker. And, and saw the services that were being provided. So it didn't come as a, a total surprise, but what I saw was the ability for our staff to adjust to whatever the situation mm. was. And so you can't, you can't really ever plan yeah. for emergencies. You can have the resources in place so that you can rely upon them. That's but my job. <laughs> that is your job. Right. Um, that's my job. But, but the bottom line is every emergency has its own special set yeah. of characteristics. And so you need to have a team that can work together to figure out what is needed for this particular event. So building off that, so now we have a storm that brings down lots of trees. And homeowners have huge questions about, well, what do I do with this tree? How do we get rid of it? What do we, brings into, uh, into the discussion, the Solid Waste Management Authority. That's right. So they actually had to take all of the debris, tons of, of trees and limbs and, and debris that was on the ground, collect it and dispose of it. And so they did that, they do that beautifully. Um, our commissioner there does a, you know, an outstanding job. Um, but that again is another service that, I don't know that people take for granted, but th I don't know that they mm. are aware of the scope of, of the cleanup of something like that. And, and, and sometimes people get impatient yeah. because they say, you know, this tree you know, limb has, has <laughs> been down for this you know, amount of time. And of course there's, there, there's an order to um, how these things are addressed. So you have to deal with areas that are the hardest hit areas that perhaps uh, where trees are um, impeding the, the ability for an emergency vehicle to get through, yeah. um, the larger roads. And, and so you, you do that, you go from the very largest down to the tertiary roads, but mm -hmm. certainly at some point everything does get done and, it, and it's done as quickly as we can. Mike, understand that Sandy set a new standard for us. So we're, you know, we're planning every day, emergency management staff of town of North Hempstead is planning every day to make things just a little tougher, uh, you know, more durable during these storms. We're also planning on taking in more debris. 
You know, if we, we saw those four-story piles in the, in the park and said, okay, what do we do if there's five-story piles? What do we do if there's six-story piles? So every day we're working with our team from Emergency Management of Town of North Hempstead in conjunction with the supervisor to make it more durable, make the Town of North Hempstead more durable so we have an impacted storm like that. Again, we'll be able to handle it. Yeah. You know, I, I had the chance to serve on the Governor's New York Response Commission, and Thad Allen, the Admiral from the Coast Guard, mm -hmm. who really led the Katrina response, he said something that was very telling in his first meeting. He said, debris removal paces recovery and response. Absolutely. If you're not able to clear the roads and the emergency vehicles don't get through, you know, if you're not able to move, you know, uh, get the infrastructure up and open, well, you're so limited in terms of what you can do. Can't get back to normal. Right. Exactly. And there, but you have, a, have, you have to have a place to put it, and that's where the Solid Waste Management Authority exactly. comes in. Exactly. And think of the economic impact of not getting back to normal. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So what, what the heck is a bay constable? And you know? why does the town <laughs> have a bay constable? Because we have a harbor master and he's got to supervise <laughs> somebody. No. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's <pretty> good. <laughs> Only kidding. Uh, well, you know, we're so blessed here because we're surrounded by water. We have Hempstead Harbor, we have Manhasset Bay, um, Long Island Sound. And so, so much work has been done toward restoring the coastline and to making sure that it's developed so that it's uh, got environmentally uh, sound uh, activities and uh, we're uh, extending trails and we're doing all sorts of things to enhance the idea of North Hempstead being a destination place for people mm -hmm. for recreation, um, for, for trails, you know, for, for things of that nature. But of course, you know, the other thing that goes along with it is that we've got all these shorelines and those shorelines need to be protected. Mm -hmm. So we have a wonderful harbor master, that's this guy, um, who... You wear a lot of hats, don't you? I do. It's really extraordinary. I do. Um, and we have, a, bay con we have a, a, a number of bay constables whose job is to make sure that our waters are safe, that we're safe, that our coastline is safe, mm -hmm. um, and they do it superbly well. And so I will take this opportunity to also say it's, it's not just about that kind of safety, it's about safety on the water. Mm -hmm. So they're also you know, going to make sure that we're all safe on the water, that people aren't driving their boats while drinking, um, you know, those kinds of things. And they, and they make sure that, that our waters are safe for all of us to enjoy. Mm -hmm. now, a lot of times there are uh, emergency situations that aren't of a wide scale. Mm -hmm. So uh, where well, there's, a, there's a fire, a house fire, that I, re I know that recently in, in Albertson there was a, a terrible house fire that you were at. Mm -hmm. you, you, you saw the first responders come mm -hmm. in. Um, a large part of that is, of course, ensuring that the structures that are built in the town are, in fact, safe. Right. That's done through the building department. So the building department has a lot, many functions. One of them is to make sure, certainly when there is a very heavy snowfall, there's always the possibility of flat roofs collapsing. Mm -hmm. So they're there to make sure that these, our structures are safe. Um, you also you know, mentioned something that I think is very, very important, and that was the construction um, of houses so that when our fire companies come to them, that they're safe. And uh, this, uh, Jack uh, Martins and Michelle Schimmel just sponsored legislation to make sure that houses that have trust construction are in fact um, identified in that way so that when our firefighters go into these buildings that they're not in harm's way. So that's yep. Senator Jack Martins that and is Assemblywoman yes Michelle is. Schimmel, just yes in case is. some of our It is New York on. State Senator Jack Martins <laughs> and New York State Assemblywoman Michelle Schimmel. And of course, by going to that Albertson fire, mm -hmm. I was able to see firsthand I was just say that. how important it is that they knew that those buildings um, had that trust construction, because had they not, they really would have been in harm's mm -hmm. way. So yeah. it was an important thing. Su the supervisor has taken it upon herself that any time there's an incident in the town of North Hempstead, I give her notification. We make a decision collectively. It's a very vital, important time for her to go. Uh, that particular Albertson fire, Mike, there was trust laying right on the floor. So the supervisor gets to see firsthand trust. What, trust, what trust. What the heck trust is a trust? Con trust construction could do. It's kind of a. Um, uh, I don't want to use. T-R-U-S-S, -S, right? Correct. Yes. I don't want to use the word uh, flimsy, but it's a different way of construction. Um, it's made with a mending plate that goes into a, um, a triangle type construction. And it's not necessarily um, as strong as the conventional construction when in a fire. 
when it becomes under fire, these metal plates, these gossip plates tend to pop off, and you can have a major collapse with a lot of lumber on top of you. Mm. The supervisor took her time. We walked through the street together, yes, we and we, I showed her exactly where these were uh, on the building. They had some laid out. Uh, at the time, the chief of Albertson was showing his guys yeah. what the danger of that is. And then, you know, from this, we have some legislation that uh, could save firefighters' lives. And, you know, the interesting thing about that is we should talk about emergency management. So, of course, we have our emergency management team, but we work very closely with our police departments. We work very closely with our fire departments. Yeah. This is so key to all of us being able to share information to make sure, again, that the residents are served in, in the best possible way. Which leads me to the last area I wanted to talk to you about. We have a lot of government here in North we Hempstead. Do. We've got, I think it's the largest number of, of townships I'm sorry, a village, villages. villages in a town, mm -hmm. anywhere in New York, if not the United States. And so you have taken, since you came from the, the village world, the school district world, you were president of the Great Neck School Board, you were a county legislator, you understand very much the key roles that municipal, gov municipal government pay plays in the larger uh, story of how towns respond. What's, what's your view of, how, of the role that villages play in an emergency? Villages play an enormous role, and we respect that. Um, the town has certain emergency responses, of course, as do, as do the villages. And the most important thing is that we coordinate our efforts, mm, right. which we do. I have the highest regard for our mayors. You know, I, as you say, you know, being on the school board, I worked with many mayors. When I represented the 10th legislative district, there were 13 villages, mm. you know, in that. So I understand the work that they do, and I understand the importance of us working together, but also understanding the boundaries, that right. there are certain things that the town takes care of, and there are certain things that are sacrosanct for the village. But of course, if a village requests our help, we're there. Yeah. Just as if a fire um, company is, is dealing with uh, whatever it is that they're dealing with and they need help from the town, we're there. Yeah. We're there in support. Mm -hmm. You know, that raises also just another issue. And we, after Sandy, we're still in this, the stage of getting grants and aid and being able to rebuild the structures that were destroyed, but also go through the process that FEMA is, ri is really um, uh, driving, but also in the program in New York State, New York Rising, mm -hmm. and how you need to mitigate, lessen the hazards, so that, God forbid, we have another storm, you don't have the same kind of damage. And I just want to give a shout out to your commissioner here who has been instrumental in assisting the county of Nassau in the development of their countywide hazard mitigation plan. And, and I saw it firsthand that the town stepped up and said, if we can go help get a hold of the villages, make sure that, that you know, a lot of people, again, don't have appreciation. Villages don't have always a lot of resources. That's right. They don't have somebody who's dedicated to go and sit in an office every day and fill out the forms and make sure the statistics from a reimbursement get done properly and that it's then done in the right way. So you, your township, through your commissioner, led the way for some of the townships on Long Island to really assist with the villages. You know, Mike, I can't take all the credit for that because the supervisor has developed those relationships with these mayors. Uh, you know, it wasn't a short time ago that villages were kind of scared off by the big bad wolf being the town, being the bigger or the larger there. And the supervisor has extended that political will across the villages that it's made it easy for us to offer help and it's made it easy for them to accept. It. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. But, and, and, and that's what it's about, again. To, it's not about being territorial. Mm -hmm. It's about knowing when you can offer help, knowing and it, that the help is, is wanted and needed yeah. and, then, uh, and then have it accepted. And again, and, and it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to be working cooperatively together to get good things accomplished. You know, it's so important too. I saw this one in my old life as, uh, in the state of New York when we would try to do the, damage, the public damage assessments. Mm -hmm. That was key in order to get a declaration of an emergency to get to a certain threshold of, of, of damages and what we were frustrated by particularly here nobody in would Nassau come along. nobody what would what would happen <laughs> is you know like a village would have a payloader and they would it would go to help another village they would never capture that cost because there was no memorandum of understanding that you could actually document well you know the fuel the time whatever mm -hmm. it was used to help another village and so we lost out on trying to make sure that, that, that all of the expense related to recovery was captured so that we could go to the federal government, to FEMA, and say, look, we have been damaged, and so we need reimbursement. Crucial in terms of, of how you go forward. And I will say the town does a fabulous job at that. Andy's instrumental in making sure that this is uh, documented, um, as, as well as, as uh, you know, others 
um, who are doing that. And so because we have that documentation, you're absolutely right, we are able when, when uh, our grants writer Tom Devaney goes forward yeah. with a grant uh, proposal, we have all the, b the backup information, which mm -hmm. is so important. And so when I was down in Washington and I met with uh, Congressman Steve Israel and um, our, state, our United States Senator um, Chuck Schumer, you know, both of them were so um, at the forefront of wanting to make sure that they supported our efforts to not only get money for the uh, costs that, that we've expended, but to make sure that we are shoring up our infrastructure, that we are able to be more resilient so that we are better protected when we have, you know, as inevitably we will, yeah. another emergency of some kind. Yeah. And you know, we actually, you know, going forward, and, and I think we're going to explore this topic in future shows, but you're now actually going to have a chance, uh, because of the work you've done through the grants, to perhaps even vision changes so that how you can utilize these dollars to make sure that the town is safer, the hazards are mitigated, but it also perhaps makes structures better and, 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 and easier to use by, uh, or more accessible to town residents. Uh, uh, Mike, that's a, that's a two-prong two approach. You know, one, we have to do it emergency management-wise, but two, it still has to function. So the government entity needs to be in place for that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the supervisor has to make those political decisions to say, hey, this is what we want this to look like. This is our vision of what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis to function. But yet, during an emergency, it has resiliency and it's tough and it's hard. And so, you know, you talk about federal government, talk about state government. So we, we, we mentioned our state representatives. Of course, Governor Cuomo as well mm -hmm. has been very much at the forefront of trying to make sure that we get the dollars that we need to go forward with different projects that we're uh, undertaking. All right, so we're almost out of time. So uh, give to the viewers, um, everybody has a, a philosophy or a style, a management style. Uh, what is your management style in terms of an emergency? How do you, you know, how do you see yourself in the, in the epicenter of it, and how do you like to work within that that type of a situation? Great question. I like to make sure that all my commissioners are together, that we all have the same information at the same time, that it's about making sure that our residents are safe, whether it's that we need streets plowed, whether it means that we need to have warming centers mm -hmm. set up, whether it means that we need to be checking on our elderly, that we identify the needs, and we identify those needs before we're needing to actually address them, that we have a plan, which we do, to make sure that we go forward and that everybody feels that they're being treated with respect. This is to me of the greatest importance, that people are treated with respect and they know that we care. Being proactive through preparation. Absolutely. Mike, can I just comment about the supervisor's demeanor during emergencies? She always is de-escalating a situation <laughs> and it's a very comforting, situ uh, it's a very comforting position for me to be in, to have somebody that's always in control and always de-escalating. Terrific. Thanks for watching Emergency Manager Matters. I hope you come away with the show feeling empowered, the information that the supervisor and the commissioner gave to you, and more prepared for your own part in the next emergency. I'm Michael Balboni. Be safe, be prepared. Thank you.